So it's um, coming up towards Halloween 2022 and I've been thinking for a while about going back to this. Um, I started making this series of videos uh, many years back where I wanted to look at the video nasties from like a collector's point of view where if you were someone who wanted to get into collecting the tapes themselves that you would have some sort of guide to know kind of what you're what you're looking for so i've been interested in the video nasties for for many years now i think my first kind of introduction to them was back in 98 when i first read this copy of total film which had this little section in called censored and in the middle it had like um all these films which were banned and as someone who was kind of young and really interested in um kind of horror films and censorship and stuff this was like this was just really exciting to kind of like come across and then when i was at university i read this book which is called see no evil by two writers one called david corrects and one called david slater i think this is getting a reissue soon um, they've given it a new name called cannibal error or something but this was brilliant this is like a kind of like a breakdown of looking at each individual title which got caught up with the whole kind of video nasty scandal as well as looking at um video censorship and things like that and then i saw this which is um very popular dvd it's a bit uh, it's a bit bit stormy outside today a uh, very popular documentary which came out from nucleus films directed by D uh, jake west and this was like a breakdown of all the the 72 titles which which appeared on the dpp list um but with all these things they often look at the films themselves and they look at kind of like the history and stuff of the video nasties and the whole kind of scandal and stuff but none of them really look at the tapes themselves so if you wanted to get into collecting which um something that i've been into for a few i've been kind of on and off for a few years so i would try collecting before and then ended up selling up and then recollected and then resold up uh, i think this is like the third time that i've tried collecting them all that kind of knowing what to look for with the tapes themselves in terms of because there's been a lot of like bootlegs and a lot of kind of like fakes out there um now i'm no expert on this okay so i've just kind of learned what i've learned over the years um from other collectors and from buying multiple versions of the same tape and so yeah so the idea was to kind of like look at each title each tape and um kind of like see what you need to look for if you want to just to put together a collection of video nasties so we'll start with the with at the start with <sighs> absurd so uh, got a little camera down here so this one came out on the uh, medusa label um now there are two versions of this out there there's this version which is the cut version and then there's the uncut version jesus christ um the uncut version is quite a storm going on so this, this is the uh, this is the cut version now the way you can tell the difference between these two is because they look identical on the outside and also if you look at the tape like that they look they both look identical what's what's different is that the cut version which is this one is missing a side label it just has a holographic sticker whereas the uncut version has a longer label um like a long side label and also the sleeve itself i believe in the in the uh what was it the the uncut version the, the the paper itself is like a card whereas the sleeve on this one is like a kind of a thick glossy paper so i've got this one in a embossed case so this kind of like circle 
comes up quite a lot in few in like other releases like kind of if you haven't got any branding on there it's quite a generic case but um yeah so that's absurd okay it's quite hard to to really say what you're looking for because if you've never had an original one like this and you pick one up and um and you don't know what the print quality is meant to look like in terms of like the print of the, the, the sleeve and stuff that it's quite hard to to really know what you're looking for but because when when uh, when someone who wants to make a fake of one of these they will get an original sleeve and they will put it on a scanner and then that kind of reduces the quality slightly um but that's basically what it should look like i'll put it on this other camera here see if you can really pick up any like kind of detail in like the background and stuff so that's absurd next up we have amphro i don't know how to say this i just call it amphro the beast um this is kind of like the first in this the uh kind of two film series by the same director uh with absurd being the kind of sequel um so oh yeah going back to prices as well i was going to talk about prices so now we're in 2022 prices are essentially you know what someone will sell a tape for what someone will buy a tape for you could say today that you know a tape is worth xyz and tomorrow you'll see one sell for 10 times the price or go for a lot cheaper so coming up with a definitive price guide is like next to impossible really but there is a kind of you say there's there's kind of a ballpark sort of figure that i would expect to pay for at this precise moment in time next year it could go up or could go down so with absurd i will price that around 70 to 80 pounds i think both versions kind of sell for the same sort of price i might be wrong the other version might be worth a little bit more or a little bit less i can't quite remember but 70 to, 70 to 80 pounds is kind of where i think you should be paying for that so amfro this one is i think it's a bit more rarer this came out on a company a label called video film productions so if i can get over here this is what the sleeve should look like um in the back there and the side label so and then again i've got this in an, an embossed embossed box which as you can see has got the same sort of circle bit in there not to be confused with vip films we put out contamination which sometimes people put this in that same box um, i have seen this in a branded box for with um, gbc in on it which was the name of the company before it became video film promotions um so with this one the only thing to really look for when you're looking at the tape itself is this top label so you get kind of nice rounded corners the same with Am with with absurd if you see anyone with like kind of a square square a square cut label that's an indication that it could potentially be a fake because they would always come with these kind of rounded very nice smooth rounded corners um the label itself you'll see some little kind of blotchy marks on it this is the glue seepage which you would get so the glue would kind of seep through the label and it's a good indication if you've got these on there the label itself is kind of like got a slightly glossy top to it the same as with absurd really that's got the kind of the um, rounded corners although absurd you don't get the same kind of glue seepage which you get on these vfp releases so glue seepage rounded corners slightly glossy top this one's on maxwell stock i think yeah maxwell stock with a brown flap the same as my absurd is so um i don't some collectors will really go buy tape stock and they will really talk about you know oh, it's on the wrong type of stock it wouldn't be on that type of stock i don't think that the stock is the most important thing to look at for two reasons really number one i don't think that um the companies back in the 80s really cared what kind of stock they put their films on they wouldn't like you know they wouldn't say right we're just going to put this out on one type of stock 
they would just use kind of any type of stock that the the company making the copies for would use so if it you know they used mostly on maxwell they might then stick out a few on a different, different type of stock so but also if you're someone wanting to make a bootleg of this tape it's quite easy to get another tape on that same sort of stock and then record over it so don't go just by stock go by, go by uh, the, the, the kind of quality in the uh, the printing and the colors and the feel and the thickness of that paper and also that top label you can just sort of tell when you when you've got an original in your hand you can sort of tell the kind of quality of that and and just the just kind of how it feels and it has that kind of age to it so there was another release of amphro which came out on a company called video shack um they came out quite late in the day i think they were sort of 1984 1985 they brought up about they brought two titles which were on the band Nasty's list at the time, so this one and Gestapo's Last Orgy. Um, and because they were so late in the day, I, they, they didn't put many copies out, so their ones are a lot harder to find. Their, their, their release of Amphro is the cut version. It has a just slightly different cover. Um, I know of about six or seven collectors that have that one. That one's probably worth around 12 to 1500 pounds. The standard release, this one is worth, I would say, around 150, maybe more, maybe less, depending upon the day, the time, whoever's selling it, the quality of the sleeve. I mean, the sleeve is quite a large sleeve as well, so you get quite often you'll get some people who might cut the sleeve down to fit in a smaller box over the years. So, so this one's quite a nice, nice, good quality one. Um, right. So next up, we have. Axe. Now this is the funny one. This used to be like a 60 to 70 pound tape. And then a few years ago there was a an auction on eBay where one went for like 300 pounds and then since then people seem to think that it's worth like 300 pounds. I don't think it's 300 pounds. I think probably in today's market like a 150 tape. Um once again it comes this, this is a particularly big size sleeve. There was no kind of you like you you uh, uniformity with um with companies and how they printed the sleeves and the sizing they used. So some printed just oversized sleeves like this. I don't look on this one here. So that's axe. So the side label, the back of the case. Um, inside this is actually a video network box as well, which is quite nice. Um, got this. So it's got this kind of very shiny, this is what you want to look for, it's a silvery, shiny top label. This one's a square one, kind of fits inside the whole of that, that space. Side label as well, once again, shiny. There is ones with like a yellow side label, which I think are harder to get a hold of. There is one release where it has like a little banner across the top, and on that release it uh, has a short film, I think, on there. This one... Um, the sleeve itself has got this that kind of like shiny silvery shiny kind of like feel to it as well which i imagine is quite hard to replicate if you're just scanning and printing out a uh, a duplicate sleeve so so that is acts quite uh i wouldn't say quite hard to get a hold of but it's it's become quite sought after in recent years i think it's become harder than it used to be doesn't come up as often but, but yeah but that's it that's that release then next on here i've got this bay of blood sleeve which i'll come back to because it's do a blood bath in the middle we've got this one which is the beast in heat which is one of the most kind of contentious titles on the list it's the one that um a lot of people want to get their hands on but don't want to spend the money because there's so many fakes out there what can I say about this one? So, apparently limited to around 200 copies from JVI. Um, so if I look, show you the copy that I have. So I, this, this style out as a sleeve and tape, sleeve only and a tape only from two other collectors. And it was kind of put together by, by a friend of mine. Um, let's see how, 
How good is that? I'm trying to work out if that's in focus or not. Um, so let's just adjust focus on that camera. I can't really see. So um, what are you looking for on this one? So let's, let's, let's take the tape out. So the sleeve itself is a bit thinner than other um, other titles. It comes in a small box. No branded box. I don't think JVI did any sort of branding. Um, the the image is kind of like printed as part of the paper. I can't remember how else to describe that. When you see some fakes, like the printing will be on top of the paper, but in, in the case of an original, it's kind of like part of the paper, so the whites and stuff isn't like, isn't the paper itself. It's like it's been all printed. I don't know what the process was behind the printing. Um, if you look at kind of details around in the back here, sort of in the darker areas of the image like here, you get detail loss when you scan and print another copy of this sleeve. But on this one, you can still see like kind of like detail kind of in the, the shadowy parts and also on the lady's back there where it gets darker. I try and describe it to people that, you know, kind of when it gets darker around here, you get kind of more detail still, whereas on when it's been scanned and and um, printed off, you kind of lose that detail. Um, so the tape itself. Now a lot of people go on about tape stock with this one, and for a while I kind of brought into the whole kind of that it should be on Agfa or national stock, so the national stock of a blank top. I don't go with that anymore because I've seen more which are on this kind of like generic tape stock than I have seen with on like Agfa or National. So, but if you look at the label itself, the label has this kind of like, it's, it's sort of papery, but a slightly kind of glossy feel to it. And then if you look at the corners, the corners are nicely rounded. They don't look like they've been hand cut or anything like that. Some people talk about these little pip marks, which you get in the corner which could indicate that there was, it came, how it was kind of like attached to the sheet when it was peeled off. Um, but apart from that, I mean, the only way to really know the difference is to have, have one or two which are kind of regarded as being legit copies and just seeing them in your own hand sort of thing. Um, I like to think this is a legit copy. I didn't pay very much for it. Um, nowadays, I'd say this the average price for one with a good history and stuff is around 1500 to 2000 I didn't pay anywhere near there that for this one. Um, but pretty happy with that. So that is the beef and heat. Then we get on to the next one, which is a film called Bloodbath, which is a quite a good little film by uh, Mario Bava, one of the uh, one of the key players in the whole um, uh, sort of uh, slasher sort of could kind of um, influence a lot of films like Friday the 13th part two and things like that. So this came out on video movies from Hoos, once again, Hoos, I don't know how to spell that, Hoos, Hoos, um, I won't attempt to, to say the title of that. Once again, another embossed box, which is nice. On the sleeve itself, small box sleeve, this there's like a kind of like a gold, um, shiny gold uh, print that runs along the bottom here for that bit. So that's what you want to look for if you've got that kind of shiny gold. Um, tape itself, got a little stick on the side, saying the company name. Uh, the label itself, once again, rounded corners. This one has a very glossy, very shiny, glossy feel to it. So that's kind of what you want to look for in that tape. I've priced that 60, between 60 and 80 pounds. It's not super rare, not super common, but that's what I put that down as. Now, you've also got this release, sort of, sort of release, which is when the label Medusa who put out Absurd, they were, were going to release it under its original title, which is A Bay of Blood. Um, they got as far as doing these kind of sample sleeves, 
not really sample sleeves. Um, so basically what this is, is um, they, for the, the catalogue that it came out on, uh, they, they released the catalogue which had a load of um, examples of like sleeves that they were going to have in it. And so this is like a basically a page from the catalogue and on the other side of the page, on the, page the, um, the sleeve is a advert for their release Rome 2033. But so whether or not you can really class it as a sample sleeve, I don't know. But I quite like having it. I wouldn't value this as very, that much. I'd say 50, 60 pounds. It's just a page from a catalogue, but it's the closest you will ever get to a an original official release. If you ever get one of these and it hasn't got the Rome 2033 on the back, then it's most likely a scan or a copy. So there we go. That's what it looked like. So next up we have Blood Feast. I think this might have been the oldest film on the... Uh, on the nasties list, it's the Herschel Gordon Lewis film from 1960s, I think, 1963, I think. This came out on Astra Video. Um, here's a look at that. So this, the tape itself. Once again, it has this kind of, kind of glossy, maybe a little bit papery sort of feel to it. Rounded corners. This one's on Scotch tape. I've seen quite a few on Scotch tape. Once again, I don't always go by the tape stock argument but when you see quite a few of them on the same stock it's quite nice just to uh to see that when you want to get a copy um the sleeve itself is like all their other astro astro releases it's kind of like the same sort of thickness as most other sleeves it's um glossy paper i'm not quite sure of the exact thickness of it but it's kind of a glossy paper um, and you can just sort of tell by how like good the print quality is on there that that's an original sleeve. So that is Blood Feast. And then next up we have Andy Milligan's Blood Rites, which is a really enjoyable film to sit through. Um, so this came out on the Scorpio video label, small box again. So is this branded? No, not branded. Now the, the top label for this really looks like a, a bootleg, but they they all come out like this. It's like a real sort of cheap paper, square edges and things like that. But that's kind of what they all look like. This sort of cheap paper, easily marked, looks like a photocopy, but I think that's what they all look like. Um, one good thing to look for with a sleeve is the fact that it should be reversible. So you should have this kind of alternate um, sleeve on the other side. I guess the reasoning behind that is so the video shop could flip the sleeve around and people would end up renting the same title twice because they saw it on the shelf and maybe didn't realise they'd already rented it before. Um, but it's your standard papery, slightly shiny sleeve on that one. Um, Oh, Blood Feast, I'd say, is about, about like an 80 quid tape. Seen it go for a little bit more than that. Um, what did I say? Uh, I said Blood Bath, didn't I? Sort of 70, 80. I think Blood Rights Again is like another sort of 60, 70 pound tape. Could be a little bit more, a little bit less. Depends on which way the wind is blowing. Um, next up we have Jess Franco's Bloody Moon. I actually quite like this film, it's quite a fun film. Um, so here we go, this is the cover for Bloody Moon. This one came out on Interlight Video. Now, tape itself, you should have a top label which just says generically Interlight Video. And then on the side, you should have a side label which says Bloody Moon. This one's missing, I but you can see there's evidence of where the one, one used to be. I know this is missing a little bit at the start of the film, so I'm guessing at some point someone had to cut this open to repair. Maybe it got chewed up or something like that. Um, so that's why the side label's removed. You should normally get a side label. If you haven't got one, but the film's on there, then I'm sure it's okay. 
like this one. Another good indication, when you're playing a film, uh, you want to see these playing back in mono, not stereo, because stereo recording came later on in the day. And also if people are making bootlegs, they tend to use kind of like modernish machines, which would um, which would cause the recording to go, be recorded in stereo. Um, so put it if you've got a machine which can see if, if something plays back in uh, stereo or mono, that's a good way, good indication of whether or not it is an original or not. So next up, we've got the burning which came out on EMI. Now this is actually one of the first tapes I ever bought, not this particular copy, because I sold that when I sold up first time round. But this is one of the ones that actually kind of got me started in collecting in the first place. So I found a copy in a charity shop for 50 pence. And that I, after getting that, and after seeing like the documentaries and stuff, I thought, Do you know what, I'm gonna try and get the other 38 of the 39 films. How hard can it be? So, uh, the Burning, this is like a Miramax co-production, came out, or, yeah, EMI, Fawn EMI. Um, there's, I think there's about three different versions of this out there. So, this version is the one with the date stamp on. So what happened was, EMI put the, the film out in a uncut version, and then when they started getting in trouble for that, they withdrew, asked the uh, dealers to send back the copies, and then they re they recorded over with the cut version of the film, and then that got date stamped. And then later on, there was another release which came out, which all used the same artwork and stuff, but the, the kind of third release has like a blue bluish label. I think they, they must have just changed their, their labeling later on. So that is the burning. So then next up, we've got Cannibal Apocalypse. This came out on VPD or Replay, even sorry. I think uh, VPD was a company involved in in some some way with releasing these in the UK. But Replay is the main company. Um, only one release for this one. It should come in a small box like this. Same sort of like glossy, or glossy all the way through. Glossy all the way through, yeah, kind of like glossy paper. Um, top label should be this kind of shiny gold, but not too shiny, kind of a matte shiny gold. And you should also have a side label on there. Um, I know there was a few of these bootlegs that came out a few years ago. Someone was like making the shiny gold, but their, shi their shiny was the shininess of their shiny gold label was kind of a lot more shiny than. The original label which would look like that. Once again, rounded corners, so check those on your, your release. So kind of cannibal Apocalypse, I think they're probably the easiest to get a hold of, of any of the cannibal titles. Um, so that's like a 20 to 30 pound tape. So that's quite cool. And we've got, so we've got two versions of Cannibal Ferox. Also from the uh, replay uh, label. So this is this was the first one they put out, which is the uncut version, and then they released this, which is the BBFC approved cut version, although it's only BBFC approved for the cinema. So as you can see, the uncut version is in a smaller box, and the cut version is in the bigger box. The cut version, the un, yeah, the cut version is worth more because it didn't really sell, and it's kind of like a last minute ditch attempt to to try and try and get the film out there from replay um both labels kind of look identical although there is a slight difference in the font for the uncut version for the the cut version has a slight different looking in looking slightly different looking in the, the font to the the uh the uncut version so that version is pretty worth about I don't know, 120 pound, 140, I guess. This is the more standard version. Now I've got this as a sleeve only, and then someone sold me a tape, but the tape they sold me was for the cut version, so this is a bit of a mismatch, but but it looks alright. 
Um, so the, the the uncut version is probably, I don't know, 70, 80 pound tape. There, there, thereabouts. Next up we've got Cannibal Holocaust, one of the main titles on the the video nasties list. So this is actually a um, beta release that I have. I haven't got the, the VHS yet. I've had the VHS in the past, um, but at this kind of precise moment in time, I've just got the the, the Betamax version. The sleeves to both are identical. Bit of a fading on the side there. Um, this is a go emboss box, so it's quite nice. So you've got on the VHS version, you'll have a, like a side label, um, and then the writing. I think there are two versions. There's one writing on the VHS version which has like kind of a pinky sort of writing, and then there was a release which came out with sort of black writing on there. So there you go. So that's Cannibal Holocaust. Um, and we got the Cannibal Man. So this one came out from Intervision and it's in a carton. So it will be, it should have a bottom, bottom flap to it, but mine is missing that. But apart from that, this is a four sided carton, which is quite nice. You can actually look, if you actually look inside, and that kind of like discoloration kind of shows the age of that, so you know that. So, an original and also on the side you've got a little sticker there which is sort of like a clear sticker so that's a good indication of that being a genuine carton also they're very quite hard to, to uh, kind of um, make copies of these cartons I think I've never seen like a convincing one of any of the cartons um, tape itself typical intervision kind of like papery label with round corners and also a side label um, but that's it, yeah, that's, that is Cannibal Man. I'd say that is a 150 in a cut version like that. If you want to get a complete carton, maybe about 200 quid or something like And then we have the Devil Hunter. Now, I don't, at this moment in time, I don't actually have a good copy of the Devil Hunter. All I've got is this version, which is a, V2000, if anybody remembers that. So that was the, uh, the competitor to Betamax and VHS. It looks like an audio cassette. Um, and with this release, all I've got is a sort of cut down sleeve, which I've put a reproduction sleeve behind it, just to kind of pad it out a bit. But on here, what you want to look for with this one, so ignoring the fact that that's the, this, this part here is the only original part of the sleeve, you can sort of see there's a slight um, discoloration in the, the, the quality of the blues between the, the copy and the original. Same one that this is a copy sleeve as well on this one. Um, but what you want to look for, they, there's this, they should have this sticker on the back sometimes they don't have a sticker on there but if they have got the sticker on there it needs to be an actual sticker so like this is a copied one and as you can see the sticker is kind of part of the sleeve so if you see that on on a release it's a good indication that that is not an original whereas that one there has an original sticker um hoping to try and get a hold of a a, a legit good copy of this it would they would often come in a cine Hollywood box, which kind of looks like this, this kind of blue colour, and then it'd be white on the outside. They're very brittle boxes, so they get quite damaged quite often. This isn't a cine Hollywood box, this is just one that kind of looks like it. Now I got this copy from someone who I brought it as a, as a bootleg version. I'm not 100% sure if it is a bootleg, but... I mean, it's a pretty well done. It, it's, the label looks pretty manky, but then quite a lot of them ended up looking quite rough like that anyway. Um, what put me off was the fact it's on scotch tape, even though I don't look for, you know, uh, tape stock. I, all the ones I'd seen before were on like um, 
Maxwell stock with the, the brown flap. But then I have now, since getting this seen, um, another copy also in scotch tape. I think this might be like a foreign release that someone's taped over with the UK version. But for the time being, copied sleeve, dodgy VHS tape and this kind of like nice blue box fills a gap on my shelf next to the V2000 copy I have. Um, so next up we have don't go in the woods alone um, this one is another video network release the same as axe was so you've got the same kind of glossy silvery sleeve going on there um, which is hard to, to copy same with axe oversized sleeve so you'd often get ones like this which are cut down sometimes people would fold them around to fit in like regular boxes but but quite often they'll just cut them down to fit in the box. Um, same with Axe, although I haven't got a side label on this one, but I've got a standard just sort of video network top label. Once again, silvery, very big, square edges, fits the whole size of the, the little um, case thing in there. So that is Don't Go In The Woods Alone. And we have the Driller Killer, one of the first ones which sparked the whole kind of video nasty debate. This one came out on Vipco, I think. Put it over there. I've, this one is in a Vipco embossed case, which is quite nice. Um, label again is like a large, slightly glossy, papery feel to it. Large, square looking label. I've seen a few bootlegs of these um, but the way you can sort of tell the difference is that the bootlegs just have really bad like um, bad print quality on them uh, the paper itself is a slightly thicker kind of like glossy thicker quality paper um, only one release of that if there's only one to look for that's the Drillicular. Next up we have Evil Speak. This is one of, oh, going back to prices. So Devil Hunter, um, anywhere between 600, 800, maybe a thousand pounds for a nice quality one. I've seen one go for a thousand pounds recently. Don't go in the woods. I mean, um, 70, 80 quid, something like that maybe a little bit more depends um driller killer again 70 80 quid maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit less depends where you're getting it from depends who else is bidding against you on the day of the auction um evil speak this is one of the cheapest ones on the on the whole video analysis list i think i got my first one for about 13 pounds years ago and then sold it and i come up what i paid for this about 20 quid something like that 20 30 quid um Pretty much only one release of this, although they did release one which had a poster, which would be behind there. Mine hasn't got the poster, but it's got the case which says there's a poster. Um, those releases go for about 40 quid, something like that, because it's a bit more rarer. So the poster was the, was meant to be there for video, video shops to advertise a film in their windows. Um, so kind of a shiny large square type top label got a little sticker on there little clear video space sticker um quite a low value tape anyway so there's not a big market for for bootlegging these but but yeah it's quite a nice little one to get next up is expose so this is one of the the the, the kind of like top end ones expose Beast in Heat and Devil Hunter would be the three uh, most expensive, hardest to find ones. So, expose it will come in a gatefold box. So this is actually a reproduction one. I have had an original gatefold box. This is just a copy one, so there's not really much point in showing kind of the thing to look out for. I mean, you can sort of tell, like I was talking, talking about that Indivision box with Cannibal Man, you can tell the thickness and the kind of quality of it whereas this is a reproduction one and you can sort of tell it's just flimsy 
you know badly cut out because it's hard to cut kind of cornery things um, but that's what a complete case would look like um, the tape itself is an original tape so that is what the tape would look like that kind of standard intervision top label kind of papery rounded corners the little picture printed on it um, most of these going back to tape stock which I said which I said before I don't you know live by most of these I've seen on like um, like a Maxwell stock it's so like a brown brown, flop, brown top flap this one isn't but like I said doesn't mean much not being on the correct stock so put that back in there or I'll keep it in a protecto case because it's, uh, you know, it's a reproduction so that's expose next up we've got face of the death the reason why I've got a two copies that's just a sleeve only you no know, tape in whereas this is a sleeve with a tape um, this is probably worth so going back to expose if you've got a complete carton like that you're talking about 1200 1500 maybe um the cut down versions cut down sleeves sort of four to six hundred a tape only about three hundred you know you know anything like that so face of the death this was always a hundred pound tape and now in the recent years it's kind of gone up to about a 200 pound tape um like i said i've only been collecting for sort of five or six years on and off so i can only go by my my experience over those five or six years but yeah, so this is probably close to two hundred pounds if you get it on eBay now. Although eBay don't let they let you list this one because it's still on their their hit list, along with "I Spit on Your Grave" and "Fight for Your Life." So um, big sleeve, kind of a uh, kind of glossy papery sleeve. The tape itself, the top label is a kind of very papery typical sort of um what's it called what's the company called atlantis video similar to sort of nightmare maker a kind of blue papery it's often get a side label as well made of the same kind of papery papery finish so faces of death what do they 200 pound on it um we got a fight for your life this one's still uh banned in the uk i think or i don't think it's been resubmitted but so this is still on there on ebay's hit list of films that they don't allow on their site for some reason i've got this kind of weird uh weird effect on his face i think on the cover i think there was a, like a stamp or something because someone tried removing it and they've ended up taking away some of the ink around here which makes him look a bit like a clown but still an original tape your tape on here so you've got like a kind of a papery top label around the corners uh papery feel to the, the side label the sleeve itself is go back in there is a kind of slightly glossy slightly glossy papery feel to it so that's fight for your life would i say that was worth um well, 150 120 150 who knows next up forest of fear um so this one has this kind of like math paper type um print to the the sleeve so going in here again got uh, the, I think all, all sleeves are kind of very similar this one's a little bit more kind of glossy-ish to the finish shiny-ish inside and out uh, the top label similar sort of thing square square edges kind of a shiny glossy feel same with the side label um, you, have, you sometimes get these in like a gold Monty box which is very hard to, to get hold of if like me you pick one up without a gold Monty box 
that's Forest of Fear. I think that's pretty worth 60 quid, 70 quid, 80 quid, something like that. Who knows? Um, Andy Warhol's Frankenstein. So this came out on Vipco again, and also there's another release on Video Gems. The Video Gems I haven't got, but I've had before in the past. That's the one where the sleeve is like kind of cut up into three sections underneath the uh, the plastic sort of sealed in. I think there was a US release which gets often gets mixed up with the UK release, so you need to kind of check playback to see if it triggers the NTSC playback on your VCR or not. So this is the Vipco release. That's what the top label looks like. Slightly shiny, slightly papery. Uh, rounded corners, good print quality, no side label. And your sleeve is the same as kind of all the other sleeves. Or well, the vast majority of sleeves. So that release, 40 to 60, something like that. Um, video gems release uh, same sort of price 40 to 60 30 to 60 something like that but then again it could go for a lot more depending on on the, uh, the, the who's selling it and whatever so um, only one release so all these other all these tapes so far there's only been one kind of one release out there I believe apart from Frankenstein which are the, the two releases and then we've got Gestapo's Last Orgy. Great title. This is the other one which came out from Video Shack amongst their six or eight titles they put out. Um, this one's the Video Shack release is like probably the rarest of all the video nasties to get hold of. I think there's only like two people, two maybe three people that actually have a copy. That's worth thousands and thousands. The standard... Um, VFP release. This one is worth probably 100, 200 pounds, something like that. 150, 200. Um, this release that I have is literally just the front part. The rest of this is a copied sleeve because it was only. Sorry, I didn't pay very much for it. So that is the only original part of the sleeve. Um, that's a copy on the back. But you can see how good copies come out. Copy, copy, original. Um, tape itself, as you can see, as I talk about glue seepage on Amphro, this is, you can see there's quite a lot of glue seepage going on here, to the point that you can't even see the, the writing that well, although you can see it. And then you've got a video stamp on the top of there. But well, that's what the, the, the tape should look like. Same sort of kind of slightly glossy feel to the, the top label with the rounded corners. So, that's Gestapo's last orgy. Uh, Lucio Fulci's House by the Cemetery. Um, this came out of Vamp Vampirix. Vampix, which was quite a collectible label. Um, this is actually an original Vampix box as well, video media box, which is correct for the release. Um, there's a tape. Glossy top label, rounded corners. Um, sleeve itself is feels like every other kind of standard sleeve at that time. That kind of that sort of paper quality. Um, this even has the little side label as well, which video media would put on there. Now I I'd value this at sort of thirty to forty pounds. I think I paid thirty for this one because it had mould on it. Um, some people have sold it for like sixty quid. But you know, I think forty quid would be where I I would I would go up to if I was trying to buy another copy. Um, House on the Edge of the Park. This is another quite high value tape. Some people said it used to be like a three hundred pound tape. Um, I've never paid three hundred for it. I've had a couple of the years that I've paid probably up to about one fifty. This one I got for a hundred. It's a pretty good deal. Um, so if you look at this small box skyline on the back you've got this little um little kind of label which kind of covers over the i think they they changed their address so they covered up the old one and then put this new one on so these two here like on devil hunter should be actual stickers 
sometimes they're missing sometimes people peel them off but if they are on there they should be actual stickers like these ones this is actually a skyline embossed box as well which is quite a nice little addition um top label is square papery slight bit of gloss to it but mainly paper there's been some bootlegs which have um spelling mistakes on but so just just check for spelling mistakes and stuff so i would say in today's market one on ebay 150. um i spit on your grave several releases of this were put out so this is probably the most common one so we'll go over here this is from astra video who also put out blood feast um on the side you've got just the wizard logo got the wizard logo and the astra video logo i think there's some which are missing the wizard logo wizard were a company in in the us who put out this film under their wizard video collection run by charles band which is where the whole kind of demi moore story came from because demi moore was working with charles band at the time for his, his company called empire video and she was making her film uh feature film debut on a film called Parasite so around that time there's a possibility she was used as the model for the wizard release of I Spit in Your Grave so that's potentially Demi Moore um, so this is the most standard release um, it's got a very vibrant yellow cover slightly kind of glossy shiny um, sleeve inside it's kind of a paper a slightly glossy papery top label so the other releases are the ones with missing that wizard logo you've got one which came like a kind of card carton which can be confused with a us release and then kind of rarest of all you've got the purple sleeve release which is the carton which has been cut down and put onto a paper wizard video paper um back they can go for you know over a thousand pounds this release to me it's always a hundred pound tape um but so sometimes it goes for about 200 pounds my little light's just gone out there but we'll keep going because we're nearly nearly at the end um so island of death this is a uh, let me put this out am so oh, my little light there's just gone off hopefully you can see it all right the batteries are run out um so this came out these this is another example of an oversized case which would often get trimmed so this one's been trimmed and i've just put like a a copied sleeve behind it um get a lot of fade on the side spines so if you can get one which hasn't got fade on there they're worth a bit more on the back you'll have often have like a sticker which is x certificate this one's been peeled off but if you see that on there once again make sure it's an actual sticker that it's not part of the sleeve which would indicate it's been a copy um and then the tape itself slightly glossy top rounded corners again i would say that is 150 200 pound tape something like that last house on the left it's one of my favorite ones actually one of my favorite titles of the whole video nasties um west craven's first film so this came out on replay again so you've got the same um gold glossy um top label and the same side label so if you manage to pick up say cannibal apocalypse cheap and then you buy one of these and you want to see if it's genuine you can look at those labels side by side in the flesh to see if there's any kind of difference in it uh, the same kind of quality maybe a slightly different feel to the sleeve than you get on cannibal apocalypse um so that i would value that around 70 80 pounds or like that maybe i mean it used to be like a 40 pound tape but prices in recent years it seems to have gone up a bit more oh right last last shelf love camp seven this is a barrel of i think this is this is one still uh being refused a certificate to this day although oddly enough ebay seemed to be happy for you to sell it on their site unlike fight, fight for your life faces of death and i spit in your grave is another one which gets taken down quite regularly 
they they seem to be more than happy for you to put this on there despite the fact you've got a giant swastika and it's still banned um you often get quite a lot of fading on the side of the the side label this one's come out quite nice this one hasn't got any sort of fading on there <clears throat> top label you've got this kind of silver embossing effect which is kind of a shiny silver so that's hard to to copy if you're making a bootleg of it um sleeve is the same as kind of all the other sleeves really that's sort of slightly slightly glossy feel to it um there's two releases of this this is the abbey release and then you've got a, another release which is the market release and that has like a woman under a swastika blanket type thing the market release is more expensive i'd say about 200 quid something like that maybe a bit more this the abbey release this one this is like a um, 80 to 100 pound tape give or take sometimes it goes cheaper sometimes more but there you go love camp seven then we're on to Madhouse. This is one of those common titles, along with Cannibal Apocalypse, Evil Speak. Um, this is like a, I would say, this is a 30 pound tape, maybe a bit less. I did see one sell the other day for like um, 16 quid or something ridiculous. So this is the same with Absurd. So I've got a boss. You've got ones with a side label and ones without a side label. So this one has the side label so this is the uncut version whereas the cut version has the no is it way around yeah no the cut version has the hologram the uncut version has the side label and the same again i think so this is this kind of has like a kind of card if you can get a shot of that this one has it's like a, a card backing and a shiny kind of front so that is what you want to look for of that there is been another couple of releases besides the cut and uncut version so there's ones i've seen one which has like sample written across the back like a, a sample sleeve but there's been another one which has three pictures along the front the dog is a cartoon dog and there's like different pictures on the back i think i used to own it it's called like the cartoon dog release that one is incredibly rare i've only ever seen one or two in other people's collections um, so that is worth sort of five, six hundred pounds, just that sleeve alone. Maybe a bit less, depending on who you're buying it from. But the kind of standard release, you know, thirty quid. Um, Mardi Gras Massacre. This is on the market video release. There was another version which came out on a label called Gold Star. So the sleeve again. You can just sort of tell the sort of shiny. Uh, not really that shiny, kind of quite a dull finish to it, but you can sort of tell that the print quality is pretty good. The top labels are all random. You'll see some like that, you'll see some which look different completely, some with square edges. The top labels are all over the place with market. Um, Gold Star, they, their ones would have, similar to the Love Camp 7, where you'd have that kind of like um, silvery kind of like finish to it they would have a gold finish to it embedded in their gold star release um, top label so this is probably i think both releases are kind of around the same i would say 250 to 300 um nightmares and a damaged brain we'll get in there now nightmares and a damaged brain so this is a um, 60 to 100 pound, 60 to 80 pound tape. Than our, um, this one has, this was World of Video. So it has this kind of like square, um, papery finish to the label. No gloss on that. Sleeve is quite glossy. Well, not quite glossy, kind of a little bit glossy, a little bit papery. You've got this little dot on the side. That should be a pen mark. Um, yeah, but that's it. That's that's nightmares and damaged brain. And then we've got Night of the Bloody Apes. So this is an Iver video release. Pretty standard um, 
quality, like kind of glossy sleeve. That's their standard um, top label, which is just a kind of gold finish with rounded corners. So 60 to 80 quid, something like that, for that one. Then you've got Knight of the Demon, which is also by Ivor. Um, has pretty much the same type of top label, rounded corners, same sort of print quality on the sleeve. For some reason this one's always a bit cheaper, say 40, 50 quid, something like that. Used to be about 20, 30 pound, but maybe about like a 30 pound sort of for, for tape. Just gone up a little bit over the years. Then we've got Snuff. Where to begin with Snuff? So this was, um, this is one of two kind of main releases and there's a third blue sleeve one. So this is the one which everybody seems to think is the fake release. I'm not, I see why people think it's a fake release because it's got the, the print quality is slightly different on the sleeve compared to the other release, which has a slightly better quality. Um, so the, the rumor is that Astra put this out back in the day and they took off all their name and stuff from it because of the whole um, issue over the video nasties. So you've got another release, which people believe was from Astra themselves, which has a kind of slightly bluer tint, slightly better quality detail to the front. I think what happened was Astra put out the original kind of blue release, the kind of like slightly um, bluer tint release, and then people then, at the same time, another company scanned their release and put out this copy. So the other big difference between the two releases is that this one has a square edge to the label, whereas the other one has a kind of rounded corners. This is like more papery, the other one's slightly more glossy. Then of course we've got the, see if we've got a copy of it, it's got a um, blue snuff release, which is um, a whole different kind of worms really. So the blue snuff release was kind of like a surface in the 90s and some people think that it was just a copy from, there was just like one sort of sample sleeve and then all the subsequent copies came from that. Um, so, but I think that this one and the other one were around in the 80s and then that blue one appeared in the 90s and was probably all copied from one sample sleeve. So, and yeah, so, I mean, this was originally meant to be a bootleg release anyway. But anyway, snuff. Ooh. And we got Atis Experiment Camp, which is another Go release from the company that brought you Cannibal Holocaust. Same type of stock as well on the sleeve. The sleeves always seem to be slightly, if you've got the, these original Go, Go video cases, the sleeves, the top of the, the, the uh, plastic seems to sort of bend down in the middle and then kind of go back up a little bit, like it doesn't quite fit. Um, mine's got a bit of damage there, someone's coloured in. Mine is also a Betamax, the same as my Cannibal Holocaust. Um, this one's got a little bit of the, the shiny gold side label, which you get on the VHS ones as well. Same with um, the VHS, you'll have ones which have the um, the writing in black, and then some you have some release copies you have the writings in like a red colour, um, slightly glossy, papery um, square label on both the VHS and and uh, the Betamax release. Ooh. Then we have Tenebrae. This is another cheap one. Oh, going back to prices, sorry. So, so Snuff, I would say, is a 150, 200 pound tape, something like that. Um, no, could be more, could be less. Essex Experiment Camp is a little bit cheaper than Cannibal Holocaust. Cannibal Holocaust seems to sell for anywhere around sort of 200 up to sort of 300 pounds. SS Experiment Camp is sort of like a 1-150 tape for some reason. I think there were just more of them around at the time. Um, so Tenebrae, this is Dario Argento's film. Uh, this is another video media release, the same as whatever it was, the other one. Can't remember. Um, Evil Speak. No, not the Evil Speak. It was the other video media release. Um, House by the Cemetery. Um, very common tape, sort of like 20-30 quid. Um, that's, that's what the 
top label looks like around the corners. That papery, um, same with the sleeve. Oop, trying to drop it. Um, pen and brain, cheap tape. The werewolf and the yeti. So this has came out on a company called Canon Video. Um, this is just a Betamax release, but it'll give you an idea of what the label looks like. It's got that kind of shiny, silvery finish to it, which is hard to kind of bootleg. They often have these side labels as well. This is the same for the VHS. Um, sleeve itself is your standard kind of slightly glossy paper finish to that. So this is probably worth... Uh, 150 on VHS, something like that. Um, Betamax is a little bit cheaper, which is why I got the Betamax release. And then we've got Zombie Flesh Eaters, which was one of the first kind of video nasties which came out. Let me show it there. Released by Vipco back in 19 whatever, it was released in 1979, something like that. Um, so, first of all, he put out a a cut version of the film because he didn't want to get in trouble with the police or he didn't he didn't realize he could put out um an uncut version then after a while he realized he could just stick out the uncut version so what happened was you had the cut version same sleeve as this same top label i think is that and then he then took his stock and he recorded over it with the uncut version and so he just used the same labels and put a, a stamp on there just to say that it was the strong uncut version sticker on the front to indicate that it's a, the strong uncut version this sticker it should be a sticker shouldn't be printed on if you have a ever get your hand on one of these um just to you know it should be a an actual sticker so you've got the this is the young this is the uncut version which is the most common one so this is worth 80 quid, something like that, 60 quid. Um, the cut version is kind of worth a bit more because they didn't, they recorded over a lot of them with the uncut version. Um, so that one's probably 80, 90 quid, something like that. Um, and then you've got the, the, there's another version which has a blue top label, which is probably the rarest of all three. And that one is probably worth one fifty something like that i don't know the rough indication um so that's it that was what i tried doing many years ago and lost interest and i sort of lost interest halfway through doing it all this time but i got to the end um whilst you're here if you made it this far if you want to see another good documentary about um videos and video collecting there's this one called vhs forever psycho psychotronic people by a guy called mark williams and darren j perry which i've got loads of copies of on my ebay store there should be a link in the description below but uh thank you very much for watching this and um i hope this has been of some interest um if i've made any mistakes which i'm sure i've made loads of please write in a comment below have a great halloween <laughs>